So you just went out, bought a bunch of welding equipment, and your welds look like this. Don't give up because that was what my welds first looked like. So this video, we're gonna go over some of the basic tips and tricks that I've learned over the years of how to put out some welds that look like this. We're gonna be going over some of the basics of flux core welding, accessories that you might wanna pick up along the way, metal prep, welder setup, the actual welding technique that I use. Flux core welding. That is that type of welding that uses inner shield or it's got actually a hollow wire and there's flux in it. And that flux protects the weld from the oxygen getting into it while it's solidifying. If it didn't have that, then it'd have a lot of porosity and your weld would be no good. Regardless of what type of welding you're doing, you have to protect that weld. So for example, TIG and MIG, they use gas. That gas surrounds the weld and that's what protects it. So now let's get into some of the extra things that can help you along the way. Aside from the welders, if you need help picking out one of those, I actually have a bunch of other videos on welders, so I'm not going to get into those details, but I do have these two, some of the cheapest welders out there. They both work great, so pick up one of those. There's probably a thousand different types of wires you can get. Just make sure it's an inner shield or flux core welding wire. Uh, there's a bunch of different sizes. I would just say off the bat, stick with 0 .030 wire. That will get you started and get you through a majority of your projects. I think almost every welder I've gotten has come with a little wire brush. They actually do come in handy. Mid pliers or whelpers. Um, these actually have a lot of different functions. They come in handy a lot. Gloves. I mean, yeah, Hover Freight has like a three pack for 12 bucks. Just pick them up. Yeah, you'll see a bunch of YouTubers out there barehanding it. I work behind a desk for nine hours a day, and so I've got some tender hands. Clamps and magnets. You'll want to actually be able to hold down your piece of metal because as you're welding it, the metal, it's, it's hot. Think back to physics, your metal expands and contracts. So as it contracts, it will actually shift. So it's really good to clamp down what you have and to get you started or tacked up is uh, magnets are great. Nozzle gel. Well, this stuff is the reason why this is actually the same tip that I've had ever since I've got this machine. And it's because it's a lubricant. Flux core welding, if you haven't ever seen pictures of it before, it's, it's a mess. It leaves lots of spatter and dust and everything. And that gets on the tip. So if you just pretty much dip it in the nozzle gel every once in a while, and anytime anything starts to accumulate, you just brush it off and it's a tip saver. I love it. While you're at Harbor Freight, pick up a couple angle grinders. They're cheap and they're a lot better than using a hacksaw. Pick up a pack of cutoff discs and a wire brush. And last but not least, an auto darkening helmet. Yeah, most of these machines come with just those little face masks. Trust me, you don't want that if you're just starting out welding. And that's probably one of the reasons why you're having a hard time welding because you're sitting there holding the mask and trying to weld with one hand. These helmets, what they do is they actually allow you to see what you're about to weld. And once you start welding, within a fraction of a second, it will auto darken and then you can continue to see your weld. Metal prep. First, most of my metal I just get or I found, it's out in the yard, it has rust on it and stuff. You will not get a good ground connection if you try to go through a piece like this. If it just has a bunch of light stuff, you can easily clean it up with the wire brush. Regardless of how you clean it, you want a nice shiny surface to be able to put your ground clamp and a weld onto. So if you went out and picked up a slightly nicer machine that you can actually change your polarity, well, you got to remember this, that with flux core welding, your electro needs to be negative and that might all be over your head. And so if you have a flux core only machine, it's already set up correctly. If not, then pretty much your electro needs to be negative and all machines that have the ability to change that, you can go through and change what's your positive and what's your negative. The awesome thing with MIG and Flux Core is there's really not that much setup. Flux Core is really as simple as just setting up your wire. You pretty much put your wire in, you send it through the MIG gun and sheathing, you put your contact tip back on, and you're set. Now, if you did pick up a welder that can do MIG and Flux, then you might have a different type of roller. Just know that Flux Core, it's a knurled wheel, whereas the Solid Core, it has the V-type groove. The next step is to figure out what settings to use. And if you're just starting out, go with the guides that they give you. This is a great starting point. And just keep in mind, every welder is a little different and it may need some fine tuning. 
You can do that after you throw down a couple welds and see how it's going. I know for a while I actually had a hard time figuring out what thickness metal I was actually going with. So I picked up just a cheap pair of calipers and this does an awesome job to get you within the ballpark. And uh, lots of sub welding supply places sell these gauges. Um, these are super nice. This came with my Vulcan. Uh, pretty much you go through and once the metal gets in there then you know that's the thickness. So I've got some quarter inch thick material right here. You get your metal prepped, you get the welder all set up, now it's technique time. And this is by far the most important part because it's the actual welding of it. And here are a couple things that I think about as I'm welding. I always try to have one arm down and then the other arm resting on it for stability. And, and that does give you a lot of control over your weld. The next is stick out, and that is how much wire is sticking out from the contact tip. You don't want the contact tip touching the piece, and you don't want it so far back that it actually just causes a big mess. I think a good rule of thumb is 3 8 to a half of an inch. Yeah, try measuring that as you're welding. It's something that just comes with practice. Speed. You'll notice that for different thicknesses and different settings, you either got to go faster or slower. If you're doing a really thin piece of metal, you're going to be probably pushing it pretty quick. Whereas a nice big thick quarter piece, you could sit there for a minute and get a nice big puddle going. And that's something you just have to look at after making a couple passes. And lastly, it's angle. Uh, I like to think of it as going straight down at 90, then back about 10 degrees. And then with flux core welding, you're going to be dragging the weld, not pushing it. And lastly, in technique, it's kind of the pattern that you do. Some people do kind of cursive ease. Some people do just back and forth motion. Don't get caught up on any of that. And I would suggest make a whole bunch of beads on just a flat surface and see what you like best. And lastly, practice. Yes, I actually pull out a piece of scrap metal before I go down and do my final project. Just make sure the scrap piece is the same thickness and that allows you to dial down the settings before you actually go out and do the real project. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.